Alright, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a battery bar, which you probably know how to do using progress, so that's nothing new. Um, the trick here is try to get this arrow to follow the battery level. And you may say, okay, big deal, I don't care. Well, still, there's some pretty cool things I want to show you in regards to using um, some various types of global variables. And without further ado, let's go ahead and have a look at KLWP and let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, I have two pieces here. The test, I have it hidden right now. This is how I actually taught myself how to do it and then I actually applied it to the battery. And I'm going to be showing you that as we go through this video. But uh, look at all these globals I have. The width is going to adjust the width of the actual battery bar. But notice as I change this, that arrow is staying right there where the green and the red is. And that's my battery level right now, 75%. So regardless of how thin I make this, how thick I make this, or how how wide or how not wide I make it, it's going to change. Um, we can adjust the thickness of the bars in there. So basically, like if, if I want to see all 100 pieces based on my progress, I can do that. You're going to notice this thing is going to change some colors. And here it looks crazy. I don't know what's going on with KOWP or it might be my phone. I don't know if my screen's about to blow up on me. I don't know. But I have noticed it's been acting a little funky. Maybe it's just what, with what I'm doing here. Who knows? All right, the height. Notice we can adjust the height. And here's what I like too. Watch this. Suppose you want the arrow at the top. Now, again, I hate that this is um, acting all crazy, but it is what it is. Let me see if I can get it to be still and chill out. Let me save. Look, look at that. Do you see that? That's not even a save button. I don't know what in the world's going on. But uh, let me see. Go back to home screen. Okay, let me open it back up. Maybe it'll go away. All right, I think we're back in business. Maybe, maybe not. As I was mentioning, though, we can adjust the width and all that. Watch this. Uh, we can switch the arrow. Look at that. See how the arrow's on that side? You can adjust the padding once you move that arrow. Notice the padding. We can move it. I can switch the arrow back. I can move it wherever I want it. We can adjust the arrow size. And here's something else that's really cool. Notice the zero is on the left fully charged is on the right, so I've used up some of my battery. Well, notice zero's on the left. What about if I come in here to my list and I go zero right? Notice my zero is on the right and fully charged is on the left. What if I go zero top? Notice zero's at the top, 100. This is fully charged. Remember, I have used some of my battery, and then if I go to zero bottom, Boom, now zero's at the bottom and I have a vertical bar instead of a horizontal bar. And when we do all this, we can still adjust our arrow padding, we can still do all that crazy stuff and everything still works nicely. That's the power of global variables, changing things dynamically and changing multiple things. I like it, um, that's why I'm, becoming, I'm more and more becoming a global variable freak and I'm using all these global variables now. Um, now, you got global variable colors, I've, I've mentioned that in quite a few videos. But with all that said, how do we get this arrow to match this thing? And it involves us having some fun with padding. Now these two down here, these aren't going to change anything that you can see on the screen because I have them linked with a piece that I have hidden for right now. So I'm going to hide this entire battery piece because I'm that's that. Let me back up layer. I'm in my battery overlap group, so I just want to go ahead and hide this. So I'm going to go to never. There, it's gone. Now you don't see anything up here because I also have this one test. I'm going to show this one now. So layer, visible, always. This is how I taught myself to figure, or taught myself, this is how I figured it out. What I did is back in globals, I have two global variables that I said didn't do anything. Well now watch happens, or watch what happens. Basically, I created a global variable to kind of like level test. I just wanted to test and see if I could make, well, you can make this bar change by, well, here, scrolling. But this is no different than you doing a custom thing on progress. So I was tinkering around with that, and then I figured out how I needed to pad this star or arrow or whatever you use to always stay right beneath that battery level, regardless of the width. If you can notice it, notice that there, I know it's real small, but now if I start dragging it, you see how the, the battery level or whatever level is changing, but yet it still is moving that star right there with it. And it's all about padding this star or this arrow correctly. So let me uh, 
widen this back up a little bit. As you can see, it's starting to be a little slow again. Okay, good. All right, back to items. Let's go to test because that's the one that we have showing now. And progress, now when you create your progress, you're gonna to wanna to put it on battery, but this is just for me to show you how I got this to work out. I'm gonna go back to the items and I'm gonna to go to this star that I have. And I'm not doing any crazy switching of the star around in this, I'm just showing you how to get it to move with the battery level. So top padding, I padded it a little bit, that way the star wouldn't be overlapping on that. Now all I did really in the other way when I was changing it while ago is I applied a global variable and I can slide my global variable to make this thing wherever I want it to be. No big deal there. But here's the deal. If we uh, go back, I'm going to go back to my globals yet again. Hopefully it doesn't freeze things up. And if I come down here to the bottom and if I put this test, level test, I'm going to put it right at 50. Now, when it's at 50, I want this arrow or this star or whatever to be right in the center. And it is in the center of that thing. And regardless of how not wide or how wide I make it, notice it's staying in the center. However, whenever this level goes above 50, your battery level or whatever, when it goes above 50, I want to apply some left padding to make it move this way. Listen to what I'm saying. If the level is above 50, we want to apply some left padding. Well, when we apply left padding, I'm not applying left padding right now. I'm actually adjusting the level, but notice left padding is pushing it to the right. That's how you got to think about that. Now let's go back to 50 again. All right. If this level is less than 50, we want to apply some right padding and shoot it this way because right padding will shoot this this way. So if the level is less than 50, now I'm down here in the teens or the 20s, notice we're applying some right padding and shooting it this way. Well, how does that code look? Remember these two global variable names just for teaching purposes. And I'm going to go to test. I'm going to go to my star. And I'm going to go and look at the left and right padding. So remember, I said, now notice the level here, this battery level or whatever custom level I have here. This is less than 50. Notice I have some right padding. I don't have any left padding. Let's go to the code for that. Remember what I said? If the level is less than 50. There you go. Now, what's this math that I'm doing here? If the level is less than 50, such as 49, 48, 47, 46, blah, 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 blah. We want to take 50 and subtract that number. For example, if the battery level was 49, that means the battery level is less than 50, we would want to take 50 minus 49, which would be 1, divide that by 50. So really you're taking 1 out of 50. That's not much because 49 is real close to 50. So we're almost getting a percentage, a percentage. 50 minus 49 is 1 divided by 50. That's 1 50th of that global variable width. Because by us tying in that into this padding, when I change the width of that uh, bar that we saw a few seconds ago, by tying that into this, whenever you change that width, it's automatically going to change this correctly and proportionally and things like that. It's a lot of math here, as you can see. But I hope that makes sense. So if the battery level is less than 50. For example, suppose the battery level was zero. Zero. Well, we would take... 50 minus 0, well, that's 50. Divide it by 50, that's 1. That's 100% less. You know what I'm saying? That's 100% less than the uh, battery level 50. And take that and multiply it by that global variable test width is what I call it. And that's what's going to push it all the way to the left. Whereas if the battery level was at like 49, 50 minus 49 is 1 50th of that width. So it's not gonna, it's going to barely move it. And then everything in between, like when your level's 20s, 30s, 40s, this formula will always move it correctly. So that one's good. Now, what about if the battery level, oh yeah, otherwise, what do you want it to be? So basically, if this condition is not met, we want zero, zero padding on that piece. Now, let's go over here to this one. Notice I have zero padding on my left padding because this is only going to apply, this little code I have in this one is only going to work when the battery level is greater than 50. So if that level is greater than 50, 
You want to take that battery level or whatever level it is you have and you want to subtract 50 from it. For example, if, we, if our battery level was 100, if we had a fully charged battery, we would take 100, subtract 50, that would give us 50, divide by 50, that's 1, 1 times the global variable test width, that means we're going to move that thing all the way to the right. Whereas if your level is just over 50, for example, 51, 51 minus 50 is 1, 1 50th, 1 divided by 50, 1 50th of our width. So we're barely moving it. That's how you got to think about that. A lot of math. And notice I did switch around the 50 minus or the level minus versus the last code. And that's how this thing, just a few moments ago, a few minutes ago, I was sliding a little global variable bar around and everything was moving. Well, that's why it was moving the way it was moving. So that's how I got it. That's how I figured it out. Now, ultimately, what are you going to need to do? I know you've waited 15 or however long I've been recording this video now, but I want to explain to you really what's going on. We have to apply left padding at certain times and right padding at certain times. So if I go back to the one that I have hidden, this is the one that's actually operating on battery. Let's go look at its code. It's virtually the same code except I'm no longer testing something. I actually want it to work based on the battery level. So uh, da, 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 da. I need to go back and make this thing visible because layer always. All right, there we go. So icon. Now you might say, oh, this isn't left and right padding. This is top and bottom padding. Well, the thing is I had this thing rotated based on my global variables that I set back here. This is a lot going on. I know that. But uh, where are we at? How do I rotate it back? I got to, there it is. Let's do zero left. Go back to the basics. Boom. All right. So here's the code that you want to use to get that arrow to work. Under battery, font icon, and position. All right. So notice my battery level is greater than 50. So here is what the formula is doing. If the battery level is greater than 50, take the battery level and subtract 50 from it. So let's look at our battery level right now. 75. 75 minus 50, 25. 25 divided by 50, well, that's a half. Half of what? Half of that global variable width. That's the first thing that I, one of the first things I changed back at the beginning of this video. So I'm guessing my global variable width is going to be twice as big as this. Uh, 290 times 2, that's what? 29, 29, 58, so 580. I bet you my global variable width is 580 right now. But if I change my global variable width, it's still going to run the same formula and it's still going to multiply it by whatever my global variable width is. So that's what's cool about it. You can dynamically change or you can change your width of your battery bar and you can dynamic or have the arrow dynamically change with that based on you incorporating these global variables into it. Now you could knock out a bunch of this stuff, but this is where I'm going with these videos. I'm using a lot of global variables now because I like to change stuff a lot and I don't want to have to go back and edit so many different pieces. So I do the grunt work at the beginning of putting all these global variables into my codes or whatever, and then all I have to do is slide something in my global variables and everything changes the way I want it to. Um, and I'm, I'm, this may, you may disagree, but I think really that's uh, a, how KOWP is really meant to be used. Used a lot, using a lot of global variables and changing just those and watch everything else just change right in front of your eyes. I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, it, it does to me. All right, so that's that one. Let's go back and look at the right padding. So the right padding is when the star a while ago was sliding over to the left. That's what right padding does. And that happens when our level was less than 50. So notice I've changed my code. I'm not doing level tests anymore. I'm actually doing the battery level code. So if the battery level is less than 50, take 50 and subtract whatever the battery level is. Well, this code's not even being applied. That's why it's returning a zero because the battery level is not less than 50. But if it was, that's what's going to slide that arrow over to the left. Now, I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm tying a lot of global variables into this, and if you're just getting into KLWP, I should have said this a lot sooner. This is probably, you're probably like, what? what is this guy talking about? But um, for those of you who are a little bit more seasoned with this, I, I hope that does make sense. We're using a lot of math here. 
So uh, going back to my globals, again, this is what I like about it. I like being able to change one thing. I notice I'm changing the width of my battery bar, but yet that arrow is the padding, the left and right padding that I'm applying through a code using GV width is what's allowing that to stay in the exact same spot. Even when I switch it over, even when I apply some uh, up and down padding, that's just to me to get, that's just so you can get that arrow wherever you want it. Because maybe you want the arrow way down there, but you want a ginormous arrow. Okay, why not? There you go, but notice it's pointing right at it. So, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, back at the beginning, this one is, um, even if you know how to make a battery bar, hopefully you have picked up on some new pieces here. If you're interested in learning about how to move, how to rotate this thing, I tell you what, while I'm at it, I'll just go ahead and show you a few of those pieces. If I just go back to my items and go into my battery group, that's this piece here. That piece up there was the test. All I really did was apply an offset. I went to rotation for the entire piece. And watch this. Let me take this code out. Well, I'll show you what the code is. Um, I, if you recall, I had a list global variable called bat bar. Um, basically, I had four options. I had zero left, zero right, zero top, zero bottom. And if, uh, if I set that list global variable to zero top, I want to rotate this thing 90 degrees. And basically, that's taking it 90 degrees and rotating it clockwise. If bat bar is zero right, you want to rotate it 180 degrees. Really, that's what I did to that entire group is I rotated it 180 degrees clockwise. And then bat bar, if this is zero bottom, you want to rotate it 270 degrees. That's rotating that bar 270 degrees clockwise, which is what puts that zero level at the bottom versus zero being at the right or zero at the top. You might say, well, what about zero left? Well, zero left, I don't want to do any rotation. So that's why I got my uh, if code, otherwise leave it at zero. And let me show you, if I take away this code, I can actually do this um, manually uh, using a little bar here. So zero, watch, when I rotate at 90, that's when the zero level is at the top. Now, I know it's not exactly at 90, but that's how I had it coded. Um, if my list global variable is zero top, notice my zero is at the top and I'm rotating it to 90. What if my uh, list global variable was zero right? If the zero level is to the right, I wanted to rotate it to 180 because now zero is over here at the right, fully charged is over here on the left. What about if it, zero was at the bottom? That's when we want to be at 270. So notice at 270, my zero is at the bottom, my fully charged is at the top. And then otherwise, when we want zero left, I just want it to be at zero because zero is at the left, no degrees on that. Uh, there's there's plenty of other things inside of here too. What about the arrow? How am I making that arrow jump around? I'm doing something pretty similar to the arrow except I'm using that on off switch. Either, either this is arrows facing up or it's going to rotate 180 degrees based on that little switch, that on off switch. So basically if the on off switch, if I flip it on, I'm gonna flip, rotate that thing 180 degrees. Um, otherwise, I want it back at zero. So right now my switch must be off because I'm at zero degrees. But if I flip that switch on, it's going to rotate at 180 degrees, which means it's going to end up pointing down. And then we can go and adjust some up and down padding. Um, and as you can see here, top padding, bottom padding, I have things, I have codes tied into that. I'll just show you the codes, but I'm probably getting a little carried away. Um, if you go back and look at the beginning of the video, I had arrow padding. That was a number global variable. There's the on-off switch. See if you can make some sense of that. I'll be more than happy to break this more, uh, break this down more for you. However, I'm just trying to show you uh, how you can really start to link a lot of stuff together and make it change based on your global variables. But yeah, what turned out to be just a basic video on having an arrow pointed at a battery meter turned into something kind of crazy, but um, I've enjoyed it, and that's it for this video. I hope it helped.